All right, task five of assignment one. This is where it gets exciting, where things get a bit maybe increasing in the coding challenge, perhaps. So let's have a look what it says for task five. There's lots of steps. Whoa. Repeat the tasks one to three for the value shown for trajectory two and three. So if we remember in the beginning, there were three trajectories. We're going to repeat the same task we just did to calculate the trajectories for the first one, now for second and third. So this task is not about being incredibly boring, it's about learning to do things uh, repeatedly, which is one of the powers of coding. So here are the details of what it wants. It wants first, for 5.1, assign the range of trajectory 2 and 3 to the variables d2 and d3. So it's the, dis the, the maximum horizontal distance before it lands on the floor of those tra trajectories. So if we look, the only things that have changed are the initial angles, are 45 and 60, the rest are the same. Okay, how are we going to do this? Let's start with the simplest way to do this, okay? The simplest way to do this is the following. We're going to copy some code. I'm going to copy this delete this line, don't need it, and go down to task 5.1 where we need to do to figure out what D2 and D3 is. You can just paste this code and you can call theta, make sure to rename this now because um, the code will check what value you gave for theta1, so theta2, and you just paste, copy and paste with your keyboard, you highlight it and press Control c then double click on this to highlight it, Control v to replace, double click, Control v double click, Control v But notice we need to change the initial angle to what was specified for trajectory 2. It wasn't 30 degrees, it was 45. And now this should be the answer for d2. Note that we've changed the value now for p1, p2, and p3. It'll forget what values they were before, and it will take, it'll just, the code will run, maybe I should have specified this before, but the code first executes the, the, the first line, then it executes the next line, then it executes the next line. It doesn't care, when it executes this line, it just looks, what is theta 2, what are these values, and it inputs them there. It doesn't care what they were, like, much before in the code, it just wants to know what they were, the last thing that they were made equal to, so. And that's why this line now works, this gives you d2. And you can do the same for D3. Just copy all this code down, paste it, call this D3. Um, sorry, no, that's D2. Uh, call this theta3. The launch angle is 60. These angles are all theta3 now. Note that by splitting up the formula like this, it did make it a bit easier to edit. And this is now D3. That's one way to do D2 and D3. So there's, if we go down, there's no pretest anymore. Let's draw that up here. We can run the code if we want. The only way we're going to be able to check this answers now is by doing a plot. And then when you finally submit, you'll know. So look, this here is showing you what you're being evaluated on. It's saying you're being evaluated if x2 is correct, x3 is correct, y2, y3. But there's no pretest here. If you see the words pretest. So if I click the button pretest, which you should press often, it will only tell you if you've got the first bit parts right. And that will be the same for all assignments and coursework. Yeah. So now we're not, we've just got to check the code really carefully and make sure that it's correct. We've got to make sure we're using exactly the same code as D1. Then we've pasted it here and changed everything we need. Okay, so that's repeating the task two times. So um, now we're going to calculate, um, so that we've already given a value for D2 and D3. Let's do the same thing for X2 and X3 now. So this is a bit easier. Let's scroll up to where we gave this value for X1. Let's copy this by highlighting it and pressing Ctrl C. And let's scroll down. And now you're going to paste it here by pressing Ctrl V. But we want this to be the value for x2 now. So you've got 2 here, and this is no longer d1, is it? This is d2. Oh, I realize this code is slightly different than the one I originally wrote. I originally wrote this. 
So let's go back to that, just to keep it consistent. So that gives you the answer for D2, and this gives you the answer for D3. I copied and pasted it, and now I'm changing D2 to D3 here. Okay, make sure to look really carefully if it's all twos, the 200 stays the same, transpose stays the same, and this is 3. So this is us doing the tasks X2 and X3. The next task is to calculate Y2 and Y3. We'll do that the same way. We'll copy over the code for Y1 and edit it. So let's scroll up, find that code. Here it is, all this bit here. Highlight and Control C. Then come down. Here you can use Control V. And now we're going to change this so we can calculate Y2. So it's no longer theta 1, it's theta 2. Everything else stays the same. Everything here is the same. Q, change Q1 and Q2 for the right values for Y2. So this is in fact Y2. Same thing for Y3. So now remember, MATLAB is going to execute this, give this a value. Then it's going to execute this, give it a value. And then it's going to execute this. On the right hand side, it will calculate this, this vector, and assign it to Y2. Later, it doesn't matter that we change Q1, you've already got a value that you wanted for Y2. Okay, so this will completely change what Q1 is by writing theta 3. Here, theta 3, everything else is the same, so this is actually Y3. So we've now done these two tasks here. You could have just uncommented here and write what code you wanted on the right, but we've already done that. So now, um, you may be feeling a little unsure have you got the right answer? Maybe we made a mistake. You've always got to think of a way to check that you've not made a mistake. So uh, one tip that was given in the task was to plot all the values of the trajectories. Plot all the trajectories. Tip. You can visually, you can check your answers visually by plotting all three trajectories. If you follow this link, click, it'll give you some tips. But I'm just going to go straight ahead and show you what that looks like, okay? Scroll up here, there you go. Straight ahead, what that looks like. So this is not a task, this is something to help you check you've done the task correctly. So the tip is the following, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to first plot the trajectory 1. And then you can give it the, the labels maybe if you want. So you can label the x and the y axis. If you want to see on the same figure the trajectory for 2 and 3, you write the words, hold on, hold that plot, hold it still, I'm going to add to it. What are you going to add? I'm going to add trajectory 2 and trajectory 3. And then you can give a title, a legend, a grid, I'm going to do all that. Plot. The all three trajectories, and here's a legend for each of the plots. Let's see if that works to give the legend like this as a vector. So I'm going to run. Takes a while. Voila! So, is it right? Is this right? So, the trajectory at the angle 30 from the floor, it's got an angle 30, is that's the smallest angle. So it should launch at the smallest angle. And it looks correct. It launches at the smallest angle. The second trajectory launches at a slightly larger angle, and so on and so forth. But they should have all landed at zero. And they haven't. So something has gone wrong. Look how useful it was to plot. We can see now they should have all landed at they should have all finished their, their at, at y equals 0. Why didn't they? So let's go back and find out what went wrong. So let's start with the last formulas we did. y3 and y2. So let's read this again. It says y3 equals x1. <laughs> it's not x1, is it? It's x3. We've calculated x3 and 2 just above. So this needs to be x2, and this needs to be x3. And we caught that error just by looking at the plot, so plotting is vital. Let's plot it again and hope it works. It's 
it's you it's great to make errors you're supposed to make errors even i make errors i didn't intend to make an error there but actually i thought now it's helpful to see this error now look they all land at y equals zero they visually look correct wonderful so that's plotting all those three data types